I have loved God my whole life. I was raised in a Christian home. My first word was actually Jesus. I was raised uh, from a very young age to tithe 10%. Um, I was babysitting at about 11 years old, making $5 an hour, and I just, I knew that the, the 50 cents wasn't mine. It, it was it was to go straight to God. It was just hardwired into me to give that first 10% to God. Um, and a few years ago, God really put it on my heart to start giving above and beyond 10%. Uh, God put it on my heart to sort of pray about my whole salary at the beginning of the year and to um, to think of a certain percent that, that I wanted to give God. So um, I started doing that and I would give um, whatever God put on my heart in about March of, of that year uh, before I even made the money. Just this is my salary for the year. This is what I feel like belongs to God. Um, going back to 2015, I was in my room alone on Labor Day and and I sat up in my bed and it felt like I was inside of a tornado. I could see, but every everything in the room was going everywhere. So I called 911 and they took me straight over to NYU Langone and they had me in an MRI in seconds. They knew that something was wrong in my brain. And come to find out that um, my brain was bleeding in my brainstem and the part of my brain that got damaged was the part of my brainstem which um, controls my eyes. The brainstem is where all of the signals in your brain are being sent and received. Your eyesight, your vision, your metabolism, sleep, the senses in your body. And um, my lines got crossed and the swelling had, had damaged this part of my brain. I continued to uh, work in finance. Uh, I worked at a hedge fund um, with incredible pain, like seeing my screen hurt my eyes. In May, um, I lost my job. And I remember feeling almost relief. It was almost like, this makes so little sense that now I get to trust God with this. Like, let's, let's see what God's gonna do from here. I directly um, connected it to my giving, and my giving when I didn't know what the rest of the year looked like for me. I didn't really see a future for myself. I didn't see myself growing old. Like, I didn't understand how I could be in pain every day for the rest of my life. I, I didn't get how that was gonna work. But God continually like gave me um, gave me hope along the way. He put people in my path that just had incredible em empathy towards me. At one point, a team of eight people um, working around me unanimously decided that they would find a solution so that I could be in the office and still be in the dark. Um, it's like that verse in the Bible that says, you know, see, behold, I am doing something new. I am making a way in the wilderness. I'm making streams in the desert. And I've just felt time and time again, just God is making a path for me in the wilderness. In my early months at C3, and there was this sermon, Pastor Josh just pausing and saying, you know, does anyone need healing? And I was like, hello, like, I need healing. And, and so that week, I had an appointment with my fifth neurologist. My mom told me, we're gonna pray that God just makes your neurologist creative, that God just gives her ideas. And at the very end of it, just in sort of a passing thought, she was like, let me just try this one like lens on you. And I remember her holding up the lenses and trying them and it was like, whoa, for the first time I can see straight. I'm seeing one of you and you're not crooked. It was the first time in four years that I hadn't been in pain. I bawled for a, st a week straight, like bawling on the subway, just sobbing, just like, I've been given my future back. Even though that I have these glasses, um, they're they're really just a crutch for me. They're they're shifting my vision to a place that feels good, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm really in chronic pain for the rest of my life, and it's put me in a place where I am at the feet of Jesus almost every single day. In December of 2019, uh, I got a letter that I was being audited by the IRS. I was only in New York for three days. Um, I called them almost excited because I was like, they picked 
such a crazy year to audit. Like, I can't even wait to tell them what God did in my life that year. I remember um, going down to the office to meet with uh, to meet with the auditor and just saying, you know, why of all people did you pick me? And he was just like, we we couldn't figure out like how you are able to live in New York City on the amount of money left over after your giving. And I was like, oh, let me tell you what my God did. You know, I gave that amount, but. Look what look what God did. I lost my job and and look what happened next. And I just remember sharing sharing my testimony with the auditor. He's like, I, I'm convicted to start tithing. He's like, and I was like, you know, there's only one place in the Bible that God says to test him, and it's the in the area of giving. And he's like, you know, now that now that you've been audited, you're probably going to continually be audited. It's uh, you're more it's you're more likely to get audited. You're kind of uh, flagged by the IRS and I was like bring it I cannot wait to see what God does in my finances and to tell my testimony my vision is for um, for this vision to really catch at C3 and what if the IRS starts flagging C3 and flagging people that go here as like just givers that d like generosity that doesn't even make sense what if we're just kind of known for the church of um, radical generosity in New York City